A commando unit is planning to hijack a helicopter from an airport in the Netherlands in order to free their leader, Ben Auf A, who is currently being held in Roermond prison for his key role in the execution of a member of the rival group outside a hotel in Antwerp in 2012. This event is considered the trigger for the spiral of violence that followed in the milieu. Ben Auf from the Hose Camp is serving his sentence in the prison of Roermond for having coordinated from a distance the assassination in Antwerp of Najib, belonging to Gwinnett Martha's camp. Being imprisoned, however, will not hinder him from staying in touch with the outside world, thanks to PGP-encrypted phones smuggled into his cell. In this mega-case, named 13 Marakan, the man in question plans, among other things, the next liquidation, thanks to the help of hired killers known as tattoo killers recruited in the same penitentiary center. Tattoo killers gang gained a lot of public notoriety after a failed murder attempt on Marlon D in 2009 in Amsterdam. Four of its members, including the leader, Cor P, were sentenced to significant prison terms for this act. In the same year, two people, including Bonica Belserang, were coldly murdered right next to a pancake shop. Suspicion then turned to one of the gang members, Ono Kut, as the main suspect, who ended up being liquidated himself only a few weeks later. His former gang mates are suspected of being behind his death, the purpose of which would be to prevent possible revelations made to the wrong people. It is not illogical, given that Bonica is Etu's brother, that both grew up in the neighborhood with Gwinnett Martha. They were part of the same youth group known as the Boys of the South. Martha eventually created his own team, which came into conflict with the Hose organization. Etus, meanwhile, has become a leader of the Satudara Motorcycle Club, having a great influence on Amsterdam. He also spent years investigating the murder of his younger brother Bonica. The important thing to remember is that Etus is a close ally of Gwinnett Martha, so he is considered an important target in the eyes of the opposing Hose clan. On the other hand, it is clear from the study of the encrypted messages that the tattooed gang is in good terms with Hose. Soon, I will receive a number from these tattoo killers. They go everywhere. One of them is with Ben now. Top. They were always good with Corral. It is possible to understand that the members of the tattoo killers are often transferred from one prison to another which leads them to cross paths with other members of their clan or with enemy groups. In this case, it seems that the so-called Juroan S ended up in the same prison as Ben Auf, a situation appreciated as favorable for Abdel Hamid, who refers to a good relationship between the tattoo killers and the group of Hoes, also known as Karel. It is reported that Bernauf would have made an agreement directly in prison with one of the tattooed to eliminate two enemies, Etus and Damascus, for a total amount of 500,000 euros. This amount may seem high for this kind of mission, but Bernauf told his friend, known as Clown, that it includes all the services needed to carry out this mission. For this amount, you have nothing to do. Everything is taken care of. Ben Auf is determined to get rid of these two enemies. He mentions to the clown that he doesn't seem to realize the gravity of the situation. He explains to him that he went to Brussels for a meeting with Hose and that the competing team had placed a beacon under his car, which almost caused serious damage to Ho's life after the meeting. When I left, an Audi was following me with Malakes inside, and they saw that I was alone. They immediately turned around to see if the other man 
was still there. Thus, the clown is now convinced they must be directly eliminated. I ask 100k in advance. An advance of 100,000 euros must be paid to the tattooed team. Clown passes the information to Omar and Abdel Hamid for their confirmation. Everything is arranged. All there is to do is pay. Yes or no? A quick answer, please. Direct, brother. I say yes. Well, let's wait one day for an answer from Karel. A new conversation takes place between Clown and Ben Alf about the type of people who frequent his prison. Brother, this prison where I am, only sick killers. Everyone here is for the murder, <laughs> and they're starving like crazy. <laughs> Horrible. Nice temp agency. I'm spotting them. <laughs> the whole team of these tattooed people is also with us. I've already taken care of them for two years. You'll see, my old man. Finally, Omar makes Abdel Hamid understand that the chief of the tattooed people is waiting for an answer. I tell you, frankly, I trust them. What do you say? I agree to say yes, but not now. And when Karel is there, then the decisions for the shooters will be made. But we're not going to give 100k now. In September, Omar orders to pay 75,000 euros to a third party as an advance on behalf of the tattooed. A text mentioning this reference can be found in the messages. It's an advance if they steal. They won't steal much. And they are also on the list. <laughs> if they are serious, then they will get much more than that. There is a lot of work for them. There are many job opportunities for the tattooed, especially if they are good at what they do. They fuck everyone. They must not be related to us because everyone trusts them. On the other hand, the so-called Jerome is clearly only a lower member of the gang. He plays especially a role of transmitter of messages with the other tattooed. According to the police, the order to liquidate Etus was given by the tattoo killers to a resident of Hengelo, nicknamed Wolf. As a reminder, he is one of the soldiers of the self-proclaimed godfather of Twente, Simo D. Simo D is personally involved in an altercation with a group of men connected to a prominent member of Satu Dara in Enschede, and his goal is to defeat the club. He had previously established friendships with other tattooed people, making it logical to form an alliance against a common enemy, Etus, who then held an influential position nationally within the club. A key witness also revealed the existence of a mission to eliminate Etus. Thus, the wolf would have reviewed the possible movements of the latter during one week by disguising himself as a painter to avoid being spotted and by occupying an apartment in Amstelveen. Since the leader of Satu Dara never appeared after all, he had to end his mission and return home. As far as the Tattoo Killers group is concerned, suspicions were finally directed to Kor P, considered as a potential leader involved in the operation because of his clear proximity to Simo. However, according to his lawyer's statement, provided by the crime site in 2022, he had no knowledge of the above cases. Ben Alf himself told the court that the tattooed people he met in detention were only used to help him in a case of fraud by his own group, which owed him 380,000 euros. He also denied any involvement in the liquidation plan, which no one believed. Before justice is done and the encrypted messages are revealed, it is important to go back in time. Ben Alf, who is serving a 12-year sentence since the liquidation in Antwerp, 
hopes to be paroled soon after serving two-thirds of his sentence. However, he could not bear to wait any longer and so attempted to escape in October 2017. For that, a big team is set up under the direction of Abdel Ghaffour, who specially brings a helicopter pilot from Colombia named Alvaro. This decision seems logical since the plan is to hijack a helicopter and free Benalf from the Romond Penitentiary. Alvaro was promised a lump sum of 100,000 euros, which will be paid once the prisoner is released. Abdel Garfour also brings his nephew from France, Jawad Aros. But the team was put in trouble after a suspicious helicopter rental. According to the information obtained, one of the suspects tried to rent a helicopter from Heli Center in Lelystad, claiming that he wanted to make a sightseeing flight with his girlfriend, with a planned departure from Haithaisen Heliport. The suspect wanted to rent a helicopter that could accommodate four people. However, this request was considered suspicious by employees, who felt it was strange that a romantic flight for a couple would require so many seats. The employees of the rental company alerted the authorities, and the authorities decided to set up a front operation to try and figure out what was going on. It was agreed to make a scenic flight on October the 11th from Boodle, with a stopover in Wirt, to look for the alleged girlfriend of the suspect. Benalf's escape attempt will fail miserably, as the suspects are spotted by the observation teams before they attempt anything. That same October the 11th, individuals suspected of planning the escape were spotted at various locations, near Benalf's prison, close to the takeoff place in Boodle, and finally in Wirt, the planned stopover. The investigators discovered that the plan of the commando was to hijack the helicopter from Boodle, to go to Vert to pick the other members of the group up, and then to take action above the prison. Law enforcement immediately set devices up to intercept the suspects. An exchange of messages between the two teams took place. In a little more than 15 minutes, we'll arrive. What colour is this plane? Uh Helicopter. I think blue. I see one. Model. Or something like that. No. But man, you'll see when we land. You know? You'll see us on the ground right away. The man who wanted to board the helicopter in Boodle was arrested. The helicopter took off with police officers on board and flew to Vert without stopping. It is there that the takeover of the helicopter should have taken place, carried out by the Colombian pilot Alvaro. However, law enforcement intercepted him and his teammates. As for the team near the prison, a wild chase ensued, during which Jawad was riddled with bullets and later died of his wounds. While searching one of the getaway cars in Wirt, Investigators found key items, including a rope and tires, that indicate the suspects intended to lower a tire to hoist Benalf from the open space of the prison yard. Benalf, who was to be the escapee, denied, as usual, any knowledge of the plan. I've not done anything criminal. However, a precise and detailed map of the prison was sent via PGP phone with all the relevant features for the escape, and the paper on which the plan was drawn was found in Benalf's cell. In any case, he can forget about his parole. During his trial, in which there were many more people involved than previously mentioned, Alvaro claimed that he did not have the skills to fly a helicopter. He said that during his service in the Colombian Air Force, he only learned to fly American or Russian types. However, investigators found a manual for flying this type of helicopter in a hideout he had rented in Amsterdam. During questioning, Alvaro also mentioned that he thought he was doing something as part of a movie for Netflix. After the failed escape attempt, Benalf was transferred to the extra-secure prison in Wurt. It is possible 
that the man foresaw that the charges related to the 13 Marakan case would catch up with him sooner or later. Thus, escape from a low-security prison such as Romond might have been his only option to return to society. In 2022, he was effectively sentenced to an additional 12 years for his role in this criminal organization. <laughs>